So tonight I feel like I could just talk to you guys forever, and I'm gonna, I promise I'm going to try not to. But this is truly, I, I know I say I have a lot of favorite Bible verses, but I am not lying when I say this is actually my number one. If you ask me what my number one favorite passage is, this is it. Um, this was read at my ordination, and it's a very special, special verse to me um, because it reminds me of that grace that we're given, that God saw what was going on in the Old Testament and that the people were really struggling and went, okay, I got I to gotta do this differently. I got to remind these people that they know me and that the law is part of it, that it's in their hearts, but also I'm in their hearts and they know me. So it's one of my very favorite passages. And I think, um, so uh, speaking of baptism, I mean, I wasn't, but that's okay. Uh, Speaking of baptism, um, I was baptized on November 19th, 1972. That is my baptismal birthday um, at Faith Lutheran Church in Hutchinson, Minnesota. Um, I don't remember the name of the pastor who actually baptized me. I do remember that the associate pastor was Thor Shea. Very Norwegian name from a very Norwegian town. Um, That's all I know. I have seen pictures. My grandparents were my baptismal sponsors, believe it or not. That was an interesting, an interesting thing for me to discover. Um, I wore a gown that my mother made. My brother wore the same one. There were a couple of cousins that borrowed it and a friend from church. And then when I uh, became a parent, my mother gifted it to me and both of my children wore the same gown. So I'm looking forward to where it goes in the future. Um, but for me, it is a symbol about living among God's faithful people that we share together and that we are all baptized into this intergenerational community with all the saints before us and all the saints after us. And so it's important to me to know that on that day when I was baptized, it connected me with all the people before and all the people since and and you guys especially right now. Um, And at my baptism, I received a calling, just as we all do. Now, our vocation is not just our job, the thing that we do during the week. Some of you may have read that in the letter that came out a couple weeks ago or a week ago. If you haven't read it, go home and read your letter. Um, It's actually really an interesting thing to put together what vocation really means. Because I think a lot of times when we hear the word vocation, we think of our job, what we do to make money. But it's so much more than that. Our vocation, actually vocation, comes from the word vocatio, to call. It's a calling. It's what we're called to do in our life. And at our baptism, one of the things that happens is the Holy Spirit comes to us and gifts us with spiritual gifts. And so part of our calling is learning what those gifts are, learning who we are as God's beloved child, and then sharing that with the world. So I get to do my ministry in a very specific way here at the church. You guys have ministry in different ways out in the world. You are ministers, not in the same way that I am and that Pastor Steve is, but you are ministers in your own life. So I want you to start getting used to hearing that because the things that you do to serve God and serve others in the world, that's your ministry. Our ministry is just very specific to be part of shepherding a congregation. But when I get real about my spiritual gifts that I received here in my baptism on November 19th, 1972, one of those gifts I believe is teaching. And Um, And I love to teach, and I think that's probably why I love preaching, because preaching is a lot like teaching. Um, One of the specific ways that I've had the privilege of teaching in the past is through a project called the Disciple Project. We used to do, uh, it was through the Gulf Coast Synod, it used to take place in the summer for a week on the Texas Lutheran University campus. And it was a gathering of young people, middle school and high school age, and there would be different tracks that you could learn. Um, You might take a dance track, or you might take a a choir track, you might take a photography track, you might take an art track, um, and you would do those things, those gifts that you had, and you would also learn about how they tie into your faith or your call and baptism. And the one that I got to lead was on service, being a servant heart or um, servant leadership. And so today I brought with me one of the things that we used to talk about what it means to be a servant, and it's very closely tied to that fifth baptismal promise that we make, which is to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So if you come and look up close, this little shoe has a little peace symbol, and this little shoe has a little 
uh, scales, the, the, the scales of justice symbol. I'm kind of proud of these. I did this myself. Although craftiness is not my gift, but these turned out okay. So we've got peace and justice because we strive for peace and justice in all the world. Everything that we do, everywhere we go, everywhere we walk, we strive for justice and peace. On the back side are two words. And this is what I used to teach in servant leadership. There's servant leadership is two, two-footed, right? It would be really hard to do just advocacy in the world, hopping on one leg. And it would be really hard to hop on just one leg of kindness. We do kindness and advocacy together, step in step. So let me explain. Kindness. Kindness are the things that we do that help people immediately. People need food. We give them food. People need a place, some shelter. We give them shelter. People need those kinds of immediate help, help things. That's what we do. Then there's the other piece, which is advocacy. When we take a look at why so many people need help like this, and we try to make a difference in the world, we try to make it right. This is the justice piece. So peace and kindness kind of go hand in hand, sharing peace with someone, putting someone at ease because their needs have been taken care of. And then the justice is done when we advocate for those. And these have to go hand in hand because if you're only doing this, then you're not ever taking care of the root of the problem. But if you're only doing advocacy, people are dying out there while you're trying to get things done. So it always has to go step in step. So our shoes today remind us of peace and justice and kindness and advocacy. And that's, um, so we are called also in our baptism to go out and be servant leaders. We are called to serve all people through the, the following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So I encourage you as we end our Lenten season to think about all these baptismal promises and how it is that they come to life in what you do every day. Now, you might not go out into the world every day and go, hmm, I'm going to strive for justice today. But think about what it is that you're doing and what are the ways that you can do it that would be honorable to God, that would serve your neighbor. Um, one of my favorite things to do is think about, like, help students think about, like, yeah, being a student, that's a ministry. Why? I'm not doing anything. I'm getting all the education. I'm doing the learning. Right, exactly. Because when you are educated, then you can go out and you can help the world because you know the bigger picture, because you are connected to other people. Each one of our jobs, we can do to the very best of our ability. We can make things fair for people. We can be, um, uh, oh, I always forget the word. In, we can have integrity in the things that we do. We can work to make things fair for everyone. Um, and we can fight the things of this world that aren't helpful to people. So I encourage you as we finish this Lenten season to think of those five promises in baptism and especially to know that you have a ministry every day in the world. That is your call in baptism. Amen.